Hey everyone, I have one of my faves back. Roxanne, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so this conversation and questions keep coming up over and over again. You know, I love talking about and giving suggestions on ways to um, really maximize the time that you're spending on social media while minimizing the amount of time. So I, I like to teach strategies on kind of how I get in and out so I don't get lost in the scroll. But full disclosure, when it comes to running my business online, I have finally gotten to a place where I have outsourced a large portion of that. If so people do, do that for you. Yes. So, and I'm always very honest about that. I have a social media manager, which frees up time that I used to be on social media where I'm not. And then coupled with so many of these platforms coming out now or additions to things on social media are things that you can't pre-schedule, like they have to be done real time. So people are starting to ask me a lot of questions around how, how can I maximize, how can I make sure I don't waste all day on social media when I'm running a business that requires me to be online. And so I was like, well, I have my ideas, but this is not my zone of genius. So that is why Roxanne is here today. So Roxanne, tell everyone about yourself, what you do, and then let's, let's get chatting. Absolutely. By the way, do you have a thing I've noticed with my live videos? If I look at the video, like, you know, the thumbnails, I'm always doing this. Yes, was, you do. I like that. It <laughs> looks good. So for those of you that are only listening, Roxanne likes to just like put her arms up, like kind of, a, here yeah, we are. Yeah. Something like that. It's like a touchdown, touching the heavens, something. I'm like, what is that? Um, do you have a thing, Megan? I don't think I do. We'll have to find it. You yeah. probably have something. Yeah, I probably do. So um, besides being Megan's business bestie, which is probably the best title um, that I get on a daily basis, I uh, help network marketers grow their business on social media. And that means really diving in and knowing all things about Facebook, about Instagram, about all the adjacents and all the other things, as well as, of course, now Clubhouse, TikTok, and helping network marketers become the CEOs of their business, meaning letting them have the confidence and the encouragement to um, make the decisions they need to make for themselves and not feel like they have to follow what their upline says or their business or their company says. Because if we're being honest, we know that that's usually pretty antiquated in old yeah, school. Totally. Yeah. And what I love is you do, first, you've got an entire blueprint that you can take people through, which is so powerful. But you are that rare person that can teach the big picture the overarching strategy principles, whatever, but then on a dime, you can flip around and get in the weeds and go, and now here's how like down there in it. And so much of what I learned from you about, you know, the trends and stuff on social media, they're applicable to anybody who's running a business online, not just network marketers. So that's why I was like, okay, this, so if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, this isn't for me because I run a personal brand business. Nope. Totally all the same. Um, a lot of these strategies, particularly what we're going to be talking about today, anybody who's leveraging social media, run a business, this is going to be valuable. Yeah. This is not one of those thank you next moments. And actually you get to do even more because you're probably doing ads and things. And we can talk yes. a little about, about making sense about that. So yeah, that's yeah. me in a nutshell. And I like the nutshell. All mm -hmm. right. So let's start first with what are some, first let's tackle this idea of, you know, before we used to always be able to teach how easy it was to really think through and batch content on social media. Um, because, you know, I'm old. So way back when there was no, there was no live, you know, lives were gone. IGTV wasn't there. The whole reels aspect, stories, you know, all these things that need to be more current, real time, et cetera. So now knowing that you can't maybe plan all of your social media content 30 days out and schedule it and have it ready to go. Any tips that you can give on what to think about with where we can save time with batching scheduling and then on those areas where we can't, how can we do this in a way that now, cause like, I'll be honest, if I did go try and create a reel <laughs> and it took way too long. Hold on, hold, <laughs> hold the phone because we, you and I both know reels is TikTok and you, I mean, I try to get you to do TikTok. Yeah, that's a no go. And that lasted maybe two weeks, <laughs> maybe. 
Um, yes. Okay. So first and foremost, I have great news for you. Um, as of yesterday, the day before we recorded this, Facebook came out with a big announcement. And the announcement was that now if using business studio, you yeah. can now schedule stories on Instagram and on Facebook and you can save Get crafts out. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. Okay. That's huge. I did not hear this, mm -hmm. but again, I don't manage that part. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's huge because yeah. stories were something that if you wanted to schedule them, you kind of had to use a third party um, app and it makes sense. Facebook is a jealous lover. Facebook owns Instagram. And so if they see something, someone's doing something either better or in competition, they're going to eventually figure out how to, to, to engulf it and, and do it themselves. So it, that is fantastic. So when you think about what you can do that can be pre-planned as opposed to in the moment, now you, you can use, you can obviously do your posts and you can do that through your business studio or creator studio. So you don't even have to buy or, you know, all those buffers and all those other things, yeah, yeah. you don't have to do that. Like the Facebook one organic is getting better and better business, but I want to be clarified business studio is where you can schedule the stories. So now you can schedule your stories. You can schedule your posts with your IGTVs. You, you, those are recorded anyway. So, you, so it's not that you're scheduling them, but it's not live. Right. So it's kind of a hybrid, like, um, you can so do live or yeah. Right. Okay. right. So, um, so for those things, schedule, schedule those for sure. And in your groups, of course you can do the scheduling. So you think about that. And if you're doing your plan and go, okay, if I'm making a schedule, I'm just going to give like an example, let's say you're posting five times a week on your social media. Now, if you're doing five times, you're going to touch your social media five times for that week. You know, that, um, one of, at least one of them is going to be post, right? Maybe two you know that you're going to be doing stories. And if you have stories in the moment, I'm a big believer when it comes to stories, stop thinking that you, if you drank the coffee right now, you have to show me that you drank the coffee right now, like compile those things and then batch them. Right. And so take yeah. some time. And even if you're a week behind, unless it's something that's like today is a specific holiday and you need to be talking about it, you can, you can go ahead and plan that ahead of time. So that works really well, in my opinion. And then, you know, like if you're running a business on social media, whether you want to or not, you probably have heard that live videos is where you need to be, especially if you're on Facebook, um, but also on Instagram. So now that you know, and you schedule and you batch out, whether it's a month, I was talking to Amanda Nybert a while back. She said she batches her things six months in advance. I'm like, you wow. are, you're my people for some things. You're not my people for that. <laughs> like that. Wow. Can you imagine me batching six months worth of content? No, no, and I, I mean, you know, I'm all about batching and going ahead, but I need, I need to have the flexibility and freedom to not know what might pop up that now yes. is important. And I need to be talking about, Yes, so, which and I bring her up because I mean, that's how impressive that's not me, but she does reels all the freaking time. Yes, well, does. when you have a planned out, when all your other stuff's planned, it gives you freedom to then dive into yeah. like this. So it's kind of, ah, oh, okay. So reels right now, you can't, you can hang on. I got to think, I think everyone can, it may not, you know, Instagram likes to roll different things out. Yeah. I think you can save your reels right now. Everyone can, if not soon, you will be, you can also save your reels inside of reels right now. Oh, um, okay. maybe if I'm wrong, it will come to you soon. You'll be able to. So that means you could pre-create them save them and then go publish them at a later date. Correct. Just like you okay. can on TikTok right now. So that is either you have it or you'll have it soon. So then your lives are really the thing that you can't batch. The lives are really the thing that you have to be present for. But if you do batch the other things, it does give you freedom to do that, to, to work on that. And then your live videos, I mean, we want you there live. So if you're not doing live, I say like do one a week. One a week is, is healthy, is good. Um, and you can plan at least when you're going to do that. And it gives you a week to think about the content you're going to put in that and how you're going to get your call to action going and all those things. Right. So my first thing to say would be that if you're talking about how do I batch or how do I plan, plan the stuff you can, and then have a, I like to do like almost, I write it down, like, okay, these are the things that I can plan. These are things I can't. So let me go ahead and make block out time, use the top method and, and block out time. Do we call it the top method yet? Yeah. I mean, I call it my top program. Yeah. But, but the well, method, yeah, the top method. Yes. The method. Do now. Okay. Yeah. Do now. okay, good. And then batch out that, like block out that time where, you know, you're going to 
work on, on, on batching and your content. And then block out another, probably in another color um, with the top method where it's like, okay, this is my lives. These are my times I'm going live. And when you're going to plan for those lives, because guess what? You can say I'm going to live every Wednesday at 10, 10 o'clock. But if you don't know what you're going to be talking about till 930, you got problems, right? Yeah. Totally. Um, so did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. And you actually, you know, again, this is me not being aware of all the opportunities there were for pre-planning and pre-creating content. I did not, I mean, it really sounds like the only thing that can't be created ahead of time is the physical execution of the live video. Yes, yes, exactly. Because you can plan your content for it. So this is really eye-opening. So for everybody out there listening who currently is, you know, leveraging social media for business, if you are not using any of the scheduling tools that, again, I mean, you get the Facebook one for free. Um, if you are not using them, you are missing a tremendous opportunity to really maximize your time and your efficiencies. Um, you know, even now this isn't so much social media ish, but you know, today I'm recording this podcast with Roxanne. Well, I have two other ones that I'm recording today as well. So that way I can be in the space, have all the sound, the audio, the whatever, get those all done. And then in one batch, send them over to the editor to get everything done. So just as you would with any kind of content like that, I think it's really powerful to recognize now we don't have to do stories in the moment. I thought we did soon. If, if not now, maybe tomorrow for you, you can actually sit down and, and pre-create reels and get them all saved and ready to go as well. So no more of this, I have to do everything in the moment because there's no way to pre-schedule it. So that's huge. I did not, I, I assumed that the others still could not be saved an or pre-scheduled. You have an answer. And by the way, is that the top method you use by planning out all your podcasts and online batching? Of course that's it is. That's the top method. Do you change your <laughs> shirt and your earrings? I'm just curious. You know, it's funny. Most of the time, no. Because I'm like, first of all, if somebody's going to watch two videos back to back and see that I'm wearing the same thing, if that's going to make someone go, that's it. This woman doesn't know what she's talking about when it relates to time management. <laughs> then they probably weren't going to be interested in it anyway. So not uh, an efficient use of your time is what you're I'm hearing. Exactly. Now, if it were something where I was getting like professional branded photos or whatever, of course I would. But, um, and depending upon you know what it's being used for, I have been known to wear like a plain white shirt and then maybe change out very bright, very different earrings just to give a different look that way. But that's as far, that's as, that's as over the top as I get with it. I had to ask, I was curious. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things, if reels for some reason, if, if I misspoke, cause sometimes I hear things coming and I'm like, is it there yet or not? If reels for some reason is not something you can save, you do have an option right now is you could just create the video of the reels outside of reels for now. I will tell you that um, because Facebook and Facebook again owns Instagram is a jealous lover. Um, they now downgrade reels that aren't created inside of their actual creation studio, which is just annoying. Oh my you know. goodness. Yeah. So that's the thing, but it's bet done is better than perfect. Right. So yeah, if absolutely. that is going to save you time, then record it. I've got like 30 or 40 reels still from TikTok that I'm still uploading. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. You can downgrade it. It's great information. I'm putting out there anyway. So you can like defy the algorithm. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and making it happen yesterday, how were you going to know? How are you supposed to know? Well, and this is not, again, you would, because you're always in line with all the latest and greatest is out there, which is right. why I rely on you for this stuff. So that's great news for, for thinking about how we show up and have our content out there. Now let's flip it because another part of running a business online is engaging with our followers. And as people are seeing stuff and they're coming out and they're, they're commenting, they're asking questions, the magic now is in your response and your follow-up and you're creating that relationship. How do we, do, do we need to respond instantly? Does time really matter? And if so, how much? And what are suggestions we have on how often per day do we need to be checking in? How long is too long to wait to respond to someone? Kind of where, where are you seeing that right now? Okay, I'll answer that. Can I, can I say one other thing about the last oh, yeah. topic? Uh, John, to me, uh, so time saver as well too. If you are on Instagram and you're on Facebook and you're doing lives on both, 
I literally use my, my computer webcam, well, I don't know my computer, but my webcam and on Facebook and I simulcast same time with my phone next to that camera on Instagram. That will save you time. So you're not actually having to do two live videos at the same time. I mean, at different times. Also, it helps because maybe people are on Facebook talking, but no one's saying anything on Instagram. Well, you can respond to the, you've got the engagement going on on Facebook and it can help you get the engagement going on the other one as well too. Because you're like, oh, Megan said la la la. Well, Megan, yeah, yada, 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 yada. So that's a way you can really save time as well. Smart, smart. Okay, awesome. Okay. I know I so, believe it or not, I have not done that. And yet I've got all the technology right in front of me to do it. So do it. that's the change I'm making next week. I love it. Awesome. Yep. So when it comes to engaging, because this is what it's all about, engaging. So technically within the first 12 hours, if you could please go back and comment on all relevant posts and not just a little like smiley face, hee hee hee, fire, thumbs up, but like something that will either enrich the person who you've, who, who commented um, or lead them to a dialogue. Cause that's the best. If you keep going back and forth, like, do you remember, do you remember when you, I told you I might sing during this podcast, can't help myself. I'm in the mood. Um, can you, do you remember when we were like in our twenties and we were dating and we were texting, maybe our thirties, um, we were texting and you didn't want to be the last person to text back. Like you wanted him to be the last person. Yeah, I'm he older said, than you. We weren't texting and dating till thirties for me. Okay. Fair enough. But do you remember that? Like you didn't oh, want yeah. to, you didn't want to be the last person to have a text message. Like yeah. I want you guys to think about when you're, when, as the business person, you example. want to be the last person. Yeah. You yeah. want to always be, because people see that they're like, oh, she engages and she follows up and she, if she's answering. It is totally fine if they don't respond back to you, but you always want to be the last message left there because it means that you care about them. So think about it that way. So first 12 hours, make sure you're okay, now, watching. I want to pause here. Cause I want to remind everyone you just said 12 hours. I did not 12 minutes, not 12 seconds. Correct. Does this mean then that I do not need to be checking every 10 minutes to see if there's a comment that I need to respond to? You do not need to be, unless it's something like I'm doing a giveaway and the first five people who answers us and that's right. The obvious, sure. um, you do not need to be. So if you have, you have scheduled time to be doing, being somewhere else, that's great. That's fine. Just make sure on your schedule, using the top method that you've got a moment. I love the top method, by the way. I love it. Um, it's a thing now. Um, it is, it is. It is. Know that you schedule out time to go back to your posts at least once within 12 hours and respond back. Okay. Now, I think Instagram makes it pretty, pretty dang easy. And also if you're working, if you are like one who's on your desktop using business studio or creator studio, it's going to show you all the responses all right there. I love that. But if you're not, and if you're, if you're on your phone using the Instagram app, it still now is a lot better to show it's showing you who commented, what they did. And you can answer those very quickly. Um, I love, 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 love on Facebook. Now, um, when someone comments, it not only gives you an opportunity to comment, but it also gives you an opportunity to send them a message, which is fantastic. And you guys, you only have a little window to do that. Facebook's funny about that. So take advantage of that. Like if it's, when you see, it'll be like, uh, it'll say respond, reply, and then like, like it or whatever, do okay, all of yeah. the above, if it makes sense. Um, Super smart. Yeah. Now, so I, I currently have three check-ins per day where, you know, in the morning I go see, was there any engagement from the night before that I want to respond to midday? I do another one. And then when I wrap up my work day, now I wrap up my work day early, as you know, <laughs> just because of my life right now. So for me, I tend to do kind of right after dinner when, you know, people are taking baths, whatever, that's my last kind of check-in, which again, is still pretty early for me. So I'm looking at like a 6.30 PM, mm -hmm. which means I am pushing it sometimes a little bit more than 12 hours till the next day because it's overnight. Is that like, should I be sweating bullets about that? Or if it, is this a big problem? Heck no, but, but you're also not posting at 6.30. Well, I don't know because- <laughs> Be, no, actually you're not because she's because she does yeah. not post outside of those hours because yeah. I, one of the things you guys know, I'm very passionate. I don't work in the evening and I want people to see that. And I want to encourage other people not to have to. So I'm not there because I'm not working. Um, 
but then I come back. Isn't that wild? Like, do you remember a few years ago when we were working our business, we were like, oh, gotta have nighttime this and nighttime that. We've changed so much with that. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, you have, you have five kids and you're, (laughs) just kidding. (laughs) I have one. It feels yeah. like it. Well, I mean, like queso is like three. Let's be, let's be real. Well, and my Puppies, single, husband's yeah, always. I, I, I was waiting for you to say that. I wasn't going to physically yeah. say that, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I only have two kids and I have actually a dog and, and a guy y'all that's it. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I giving ourselves the freedom to say, okay, Scott gets off of work at five o'clock. And I'm realizing now that he actually wants me to be around. Like even if it's watching TV, he wants that time. So I'm like, okay, so I rarely schedule things at night. And of course, now that he works from home, thank you, pandemic, that time, there's no like driving time either. So that's shorter. He's done at five or it's 3.30, depending on the day. And so I try and make my time that, and it's amazing. You can do it, whatever your schedule is. And and it might not be a night thing. Maybe it's a morning thing for you, but you can do it. I know that was a sidebar, but I'm like, we've come a long way, baby, without the cigarette. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I just want people to hear that and hear that Roxanne is even saying it's okay because this is her zone of genius. You don't have to be checking back and engaging with your followers up until midnight at night. Um, and particularly think about it, you know, since you do work with network marketers, if you are one and you're hoping to grow a team and all of that, if people are watching you, they might be thinking, I got to stay up till midnight and respond to everything instantaneously as well. Okay. And so it can be a really powerful message. Now you may, nighttime may be your jam. I'm not saying don't work at night, but if that's not for you, you don't have to, so we're both giving everybody permission to not respond the minute somebody <laughs> interacts with you. Absolutely. As my favorite um, Peloton coach says, Cody Rigsby, if that doesn't fit your fa- fantasy, then do something else. <laughs> that doesn't fit my fantasy. Yeah, isn't that cute? I'm like, oh, Cody, you did it again. I like the fantasy more than like lifestyle or whatever. Exactly. It's like yeah. Exactly. Okay. So yes. So if you post like, listen, if you know, so because you don't post at 630, no. it's okay. You're not going back to it every 12 hours. It's just those first 12 hours when you post something you want it within those first moments, you want to make sure you, you respond, but here's what happens. And I love that you do a three time check-in because you might get a, someone who comments on something you posted like a month ago or two I, months I ago. did this morning. I was like, what, what is this even in relation to? I was like, oh, that was an old one. Okay. Oh, what did I say there? Okay. Len, now let me get the context. Um, yeah. but the great news about engaging y'all, it is so important. I love that you put, you put uh, emphasis on it, Megan, because people d- to this day, I hear people complain about, um, about people not responding. Now here's, here's two great examples. My sisters who are not social media First of all, my oldest Rhonda um, is like one of those, I call her, I call those people lurkers where like, you don't even know they're on social media. That's my oldest sister as well. Okay. So I guess maybe it's it's generational or something. No, it's not generational. It's just them. (laughs) Um, Actually, it's not generational. But what's interesting is she'll sit there and go, oh yeah, I bought. So my favorite, um, she's a big like interior decorating is her passion. She's like my favorite um, interior decorator um, influencer. And she watches a lot of things on YouTube told me to get this collagen. So I'm getting this collagen. I'm like, what? Like, okay. So if you don't think this works, it does. Um, and she's like, I sent them, I sent her a note asking a question and she responded back and she loved the fact that she responded back. And that even made the relationship even deeper. Now, my little sister who is on social media, but not as much as I am, um, but she's on there, right? She is all about, she'll buy all these things. I'm like, where'd you hear about this? She's like, oh, some influencer or told me to get this and that. I'm like, seriously? And her influencer, like Nastia Lucan, who is an influencer now, not only is she Olympian, but what's interesting is Rochelle gets like totally bothered if they don't respond back to her when she writes. So she's like, Nastia is my favorite because Nastia always responds back when I comment on her post. That is the reason. That is the reason she's her favorite of all the others. And I got to tell you, I love me some Candace Cameron Bure who's coming out with a new clothing, clothing line. I've already purchased things today. And I wrote something on hers. Now, Candace Camaray has million. I mean, she's doing all the do right now. She, yeah. and I, I, I sent her a note going, I heard that you have a clothing line coming out. Is that true? And I put it on her post and I thought, okay, I feel kind of bad. This post is about her 
ending some like recording for Aurora Tea Garden or whatever she does on Hallmark. But I just needed, I needed to know in that moment. No, yeah. It was very important to me. And she was like, it's true. I can't tell much about it, but it's coming soon. Look out. Now, and I was like, oh my gosh, Candace, Candace respond. I did that. And I'm like, Scott, Candace responded to me. He's like, she did. I'm like, she sure did. Yeah, we're like that. And now you're besties. (laughs) We're besties. It's so almost ridiculous. It's so easy. And so you, your, your, your listeners, like you responding back to people matters so much to them and is the difference between them purchasing from you or hiring you and not. So engagement is so it, it, in some ways it's more important than the frequency of how long, how much you should post. And remember if you're posting on Instagram three to five times a week, not more than that on your, on your posts and posts include IGTV and they include reels. So that is all on the post but if you're sharing those on, on your, um, on your feed, on your y'all, grid, yeah. less is more mm-hmm. engage. Okay. Sorry. A really good thought out intentional piece of content that then you can get engagement on. I mean, I even think about it. everyone knows if you follow me on social media, smoothie bowl Fridays, it's my thing. Um, but I love the fact that every Friday when I walk in, I pre-order it on my phone and then I walk in and it's always waiting for me. I walk in and everybody in juice vibes in Cary, North Carolina. When I open the door, I get good morning, Megan, happy smoothie bowl Friday. And they know that because every Friday I post a picture of it in my stories and I tag them. And every Friday they send me a private message back, even though I've just been in their store and always saying it's, and something personal loved your shoes today, you know, loved your earrings. Thank you. So good to see your smile. I mean, something that is more than just the repost or the whatever, there's a reason why I love and support their business. You know, they, they engage with me and they make me feel like I'm a valued customer there as well. That's huge. And and then you go back on Wednesdays and Mondays sometimes. Yeah. And then sometimes I pop in for a couple of went in earlier this week, like, is it Friday? I'm like, no, no, no. Sorry. I didn't mean to mess up your all's chain. (laughs) But because of of that customer service and that relationship that you have, it's so, it's so huge. That engagement is important, but don't feel like you've got to do it in like immediate. Yeah. The second that it comes out. I love that. All right. So our big takeaways today from time saving for people running businesses on social media. The good news, which I just learned is we can actually batch and pre-plan a lot more than I thought. Mm-hmm. So really guys, I challenge you, don't, there, there is no reason not to, there's no excuse for it anymore. The tools are all there for you. And if you're someone like me with my ever-changing schedule, I can't even always say I can go live at 10 a.m. on Thursdays because I honestly don't know. But what I do have is I go live on Thursdays in a specific group, and then I give myself the flexibility and wait until Wednesday night to see when am I going to do that tomorrow. So don't feel like, you know, you've got to have that structure can look very different for everybody. And then secondly, we don't have to engage in the first 30 seconds. Mm -mm. So it sounds to me like we don't have to be on social media all day long. You don't have business. Okay. I'm sorry, but you got me going. So a couple of things when for the live videos, because when you schedule them, they do do, they do perform better. So even if you know, like if you're making yeah. a Wednesday night, and I'll post the night before, like, Hey, I'm going to be on tomorrow at 9am or whatever, you know, whenever it is. Yeah. I love that. Do you pre now just out of curiosity, do you put a post or do you do the, the scheduling inside of Facebook? I actually post real time. Like once I know, I just go out and do a real time post. So I would encourage you to um, play around with and all you test everything, right? But test the Facebook, like in Facebook, if you're using Facebook and you're not using like um, something else, um, you can actually schedule it. Mm -hmm. When you schedule it, then it puts a little thing saying reminder. So people who see it can click reminder and then Facebook will intentionally Uh remind them when they go, when you go live. Okay. Good to know. So that's, if you know, like pop that on there and that's just an extra little oomph that you can use. Perfect. Okay. Totally. Um, you said something else brilliantly. Cause that's what you do. Oh, I do want to mention something else because I feel like we're wrapping up and I'm sorry if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, no, please, um, please. Okay. So for those, so here's the thing that we are all, and Megan, you actually, um, shine a light on this for me a while back. We are like, we're in this disposable McDonald's, like, okay. Information and information out world. And as especially small business owners, we need to remember that our content is pretty dang good. 
And so one of the things that I've been um, teaching my members and they've been, they've been leaning into and, and anyone listening to the great Megan can do as well too, is go back and look at some of your content from a year ago. You have the analytics. What was awesome? What was good? Awesome. Take that and either just literally post it again or take it. Maybe that's the content for your video or that's the content you're going to do in a different way. Or if it was a video, then you do it as a written post, but you have like, you want to save time. If you're sitting there going, okay, I've got to do, or I'm going to do 30 days worth of content. I don't really know what, do I need to talk about? It's my product. Am I talking about it again? Sure you are, but go back and see what resonated with people or what did well. They don't remember. Or if they remember, so what, how many times have you seen a commercial that has just moved you? You need to see it that many times. So it moves you to buying it. Yeah. So and that's, I mean, and I know I fell in this trap years ago of thinking, every single day had to be something completely new and different. I'm like, how do I come up with that? You don't, you have your themes, you have your stuff and then go leverage what has worked well and find different ways of repurposing that. As yes. Well. And I think yeah. like the most more sophisticated way, of course, is like you take a blog, then you, you use it in X a different ways or a podcast, but know that you can actually do it on the exact same platform that you did it before. And if it did well, then pop that baby up there again. One thing I will say is don't share it. Like, so what I mean by that is if let's say you're looking at your Facebook and you see something from six months ago and you're like, oh, I'm just going to share it. Don't do that because the algorithm doesn't like it. Um, so you, two things. Um, if, you, if there was something that came up that you want to share again, comment on it. When you comment on it, it bumps it up for everyone who saw it before. And it is, that's one way to do it. Or like just take it and organically do it again if it was that great. Such a good tip. And it was interesting. One of the things that my coach had taught me um, that, that they're trying, again, this was, she was educated by someone else on it, but it's a strategy they're using that's really working well is they're going back through, she will do quote, kind of inspirational things, but it's her own speaking, not taking somebody else's. And those do well on Instagram right now, but she'll go look and see which one got the most engagement. And then whatever that quote was about, you know, like maybe it was, you know, I can't even come up with something. You are what you right eat. Now. What's that? You are what you eat. <laughs> something like that. Well, then she'll say, okay, that is what I'm going to go do a video about as a live next week. Yeah. Because she's seeing which, which kind of things got people interested. Well, then now, now I'm just going to do a video about that. So that's another different way of thinking about not having to rethink of fresh new stuff all the time as well. Absolutely. I love yeah. that. So oh, good. Oh. Yay. All right. Well, you just made me feel so much better because I felt like, oh my gosh, the landscape of social media is getting so out of control. Can people who are running businesses on it still find ways to batch, repurpose, have structured time? And I'm hearing some people be like, I can't, but I love, I knew that you would give it to me straight. So thank you. Absolutely. Now, of course, Clubhouse is in there and you're going to have, that's going to have to be live. So that's in your live category. But yeah, but even that don't overdo it. Like don't overdo it. Yeah. Less awesome. Than- oh, tell me what you've got going on right now that people should be plugging into. Well, let's see. Well, well, you know, if you are a network marketer, if you know a network marketer, I would love to get to know them. So I come on over. Um, you can check out our podcast or my podcast rocks talks podcast. And it's, that's what we talk about social media network marketers. Um, or you can also join the Facebook group, which y'all it's really creative name. It's fun. Social it's media. going crazy town in there. I'm having a ball. It's exciting. But the title, like social media for network marketers, like how can you forget that? (laughs) It it is what it is. And I'm going to have all of this in the um, show notes as well, but definitely if you are listening and you are a network marketer, you need to be plugged in to everything Roxanne, because not only is she going to give you just really smart business savvy strategies, but you're going to get up to date real time stuff that you should be doing and then how to do it on social media. So it's like all, all the things that you need wrapped up into one and an amazing community of people as well that are, that are walking the walk with you. So thank you for your time as always. I appreciate you. Thank you for keeping me organized. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the phone. This is something we do in our community all the time. We do this. We're like, let me get my planner. Roxanne's we, holding up her top planner. I am with the top method. Um, we really do so. that in my community. We're like, oh, my planner, and then they're like, oh, my top planner. I'm like, we are ridiculous, and if Megan could only see us now. It so, makes me proud. Thank you for that. I love it. All right, guys, we'll see you next week.